The Missing Parts of History by Alexandra Suominen Prologue 3-8-1995 Harry knew, logically, that he shouldn't touch things in the black townhouse. Not with his bare hands and without supervision. When he had arrived here only a couple weeks ago, he had been told repeatedly that most things in the house were cursed and most needed some delicate handling by Mrs. Weasley. Then Sirius had spent almost every morning and afternoon they had together to reinforce that belief. While Berga Black, Sirius's mother, who was technically also his aunt, was a harpy of a woman who screamed more than talked. And he knew Sirius didn't like her any more than he liked being trapped in a dark and small space. Sirius had confessed to him that it felt like he was back in Azkaban, unable to escape and with only bad memories and his mother's screams to make him company. In his opinion, Sirius should just go out into the muggle world and have fun and maybe eat more. Sirius wouldn't listen though. He just kept telling Harry that he was here on Dumbledore's orders and that there was nothing he could do. It had incensed him badly. This was Sirius's house, even if he didn't like it and he shouldn't have to answer to Dumbledore or follow his orders here. He had lived in the magical world long enough for some things to stick with him, in his nights alone wandering the library at Hogwarts under his invisibility cloak, and it was that nobody could tell a lord what to do in his own house. He had told Sirius so, but the man had just replied and said he wasn't technically the lord. You're still a black and he isn't, he had said. But Sirius was like an unmovable wall, and he had given up. So now he was exploring on his own, too angry at Hermione and Ron to go talk to them, and too wary of the twins being allowed to do magic outside school to go spend any amount of time around them. He would let them ride off the freedom rush first, thanks. It seemed as if the only words anyone here knew how to say were Dumbledore said or Dumbledore ordered, and he was so done. So he was now in a dilemma, because his hand was stuck to a some kind of badly decorated ball oozing black sparks of magic and this looked bad. The last thing he heard before falling to the ground were Sirius and Ron's screams and their running steps towards him. Hey guys, Mel here. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, please like this video and if you want to see more, consider subscribing. I look forward to bringing you the next chapter. Bye!